to, you know, into windows. He doesn't forgive like, oh, I shouldn't be doing that anymore. He, if you will confess your sins before him, and you're not going to confess to the Lord if you don't trust the Lord. If you don't think he's going to deal with you kindly and, and justly, then you're going to be going, I'm just going to masquerade it. I'll just put on more perfume. That should cover the smell. You know, have you ever smelled anybody who's done that? It's not good. But it's like, you know, it's just that continually masking of who we are and what we are instead of coming to the naked truth of, you know what? I need to learn to be brutally honest with myself. And I need to begin to trust in the Lord like I say I believe that he's able to do. Right? Because if he's faithful and just and he'll forgive me, that means he'll restore me and allow me to move forward. But if we don't believe that, then we... <clears throat> talk around the issue. And I think the Lord wants to bring this freedom of, of, of from oppression. He wants to open up the prison doors. He wants to bring us out and set us free. He wants to open up our eyes. He's, he's anointing me to preach the good news, what, to open blind eyes, to release the oppressed, and open up prison doors and set the captive free, starting with me. And that becomes the foundation. That becomes the testimony of who we are and what we are, so that when we talk to people one-on-one, guess what? We have a testimony that is true that no one can repudiate because guess what? It's my story. You can yell, I don't believe it. Well, tough, look at I'm, I'm right here. You know, what are you gonna say? It's me. It's like the blind man, remember? By what authority, by what power, who was this man? Where was he from? What church did he belong to? Which diocese was he under, right? And what did, what did the blind man say? Duh, duh, I don't know. I didn't know I was blind and now I see. And what could they say? And they could not deny, I love that, they could not deny that a great miracle had been done. That's the testimony we want coming out of our mouth. Hey, I was suicidal. Hey, I was depressed. Hey, I was locked up as a prisoner. Hey, I was riddled with pain. Hey, whatever it may be. And guess what? The Son of God came and he set me free. That becomes, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so what we want to be able to do is embrace that testimony and allow that testimony to flourish within our being. So how do we do that? Well, what we have to do is we have to come to the place where we are honest to God. Um, have your kids ever lied to you? Yeah. Have you ever have you ever got like even the grandkids or whatever, and they you, they got cookie crumbs all over their face? Have you been eating that cookie? No. You know, it's like you know, it's like really, you know, you you know, you don't have to be God to know that they've eaten the cookies, right? And uh, in that, sometimes we're just that silly. We got the cookie crumbs all over our face, and we go to the Lord. Oh, I, I, I'm on this diet, Lord. I'm really not eating those. You know, it's like really, you know, and, and that's that point where we, you know, we don't trust what's going to happen, and so we we come to the Lord and we try to masquerade our sin. We try to cover it up. We try to make it something it's not. We don't do that with others. If we see somebody when we pray for someone that we know is in sin. You know, let's say they're they've got a, a lust problem, you know, and we just we can see it. It's like, oh Lord, just pluck his eyes out in the name of Jesus. Come Lord, <laughs> just keep him from sinning and keep our our lick our kids away from him. And keep those women away from him. And Lord, just get cursing, bring him lightning bolts right now, right? And we'll pray because we love him. We're gonna pray that much, right? <laughs> True? But when we pray for ourselves, what do we do? Oh Lord, hello. It's me, your favorite sinner. Yes, yes. You know, now, Lord, I've been having a little trouble with a wandering eye here, and uh, just been thinking, oh, this is some funny thoughts. It's just terrible. You know, but Lord, would you just be patient with me? I know you're not done with me yet. Would you come and just kind of give me a little pain? Because I don't want to be hurt too much. Now I just want to repent. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> That's how we pray for ourselves, right? but we're brutal on the other side of the coin. But what we need to do is be brutally honest with our own hearts. And we need to confess our sins before the say, Lord Jesus, help me. There's things that are going on in my life that are causing pollution in my heart and my mind. I don't find peace. I don't find rest because this thing is dogging me day and night. Come, Holy Spirit, I confess it before you. I need deliverance. And let the Holy Spirit come. Guess what he'll do? He's not going to bring that person in front of the church. 
rebuke them publicly. He's not going to do that. He's going to speak to you and bring deliverance to your heart. 